Question eight. A bag contains 12 black discs, 10 white and five green. Three discs are drawn at random from the bag without replacement. Find the formula that all three discs are of different colours. If you want to, you can get into your big old um, diagrams of trees and that kind of stuff. Tree diagrams, that's the word. Um, is that lined up right? I just thought I'd moved it before. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah. Um, but I didn't do a tree diagram. I didn't do any of that. All I thought was, well, well, this can happen. These are these three things. It could go black, then white, then green. Or it could go black, then green, then white, or, or any of those options. So I need to consider all those options, but they'd all have the same probability, because they'd all be one of each. So that would be, if we consider the first option, which would be a black, that one, that one, I've used the letter R to stand for red, when in fact it's green, maybe I'm colorblind. Um, that if, if we use that option, then it would be 12 out of, how many are there? 27? For the first one. Multiplied by 10 out of 26, because it's without replacement. Multiplied by 5 out of 25. Again, because it's without replacement, isn't it? And that's... That's one of the options. Now I could go through all of the other options, or I could just think what we're doing here is we've got three factorial ways of doing this. That's right, isn't it? So we times in that probability by three factorial to recognise that that can happen in any order. Any of the orders would have the same probability. Because of course we'd have 12, 10 and 5 as, as our top numbers, and 27, 26 and 25 as our bottom numbers. They'd just be mixed up in different orders as we looked at all the different ones. So if you multiply that through, you find that you get 8 over 39, which is 0 0.205 to three significant figures. And that's your three marks there. Of course, the, the tree diagram is very good. But that's, you've got to look at six different branches on your tree diagram in order to get all the probabilities and then add them all up. And it's quite easy to miss some. Much better to think about it as a combination of permutations kind of question. Now then, part two. Part two. A bag contains 30 red, 20 blue. A second bag contains 50 discs, each of which is either red or blue. A disc is drawn at random from each bag. The probability that the two discs are of different colours is 0.54. Right. Find the number of red discs that were in the second bag at the start. What happened here when looking at how people answered this is quite a few people hadn't really grasped what was going on about there the being two bags here and only had 0.54 as being just one probability. So 0.54 is the probability of us getting um, two discs of different colours. Okay, so that is, well, if it goes, that's the probability of it going red, blue, or it going blue, red. And that probability is 0.54. So we need to think about those things happening. Well, red, blue, that is a red one from the first bag, so that is 30 divided by 50, times a blue one from the second bag. Well, hang on, I want to know. I want to know um, the number of red discs. Well, how does the number of red discs relate to the number of blue discs? Well, let's say x is the number of red discs in my second bag. And there are 50 discs altogether, so 50 minus x is the number of blue. 
Does that make sense? Because all together we've got 50. 50 minus x plus x is 50. So this is the number of blue, 50 minus x, out of the 50. And here we've got a blue in the first bag, which is 20 over 50, times a red in the second bag, which is x over 50, and all of this is 0.54. And so having set up this equation, this is now quite neat, isn't it, that we've ended up with this equation. Um, we've just got to solve this for x. That's all that we need to do. Um, how did I do this? I, I multiplied by loads of things. I'm going to forget how to do this now. Hang on. If we times everything by... Well, hang on. Let's, let's write this. This is 3 fifths, isn't it? Of... I'm going to times by 50. There we go. 3 fifths of 50 minus x plus 2 fifths of x. And if we do 0.504 times 50, we get 27. Is that okay? So we've times both sides by 50. I have. <laughs> that was a good explanation. I'm just going to straight argue with you. If, if, we, if we times this fraction by 50, then a 50 would cancel out top and bottom. I still have 30 over 50. To get rid of both 50s, I need to times by 250, wouldn't I? Is that, is that okay? Yes. Not 250, 2,500. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound very convinced. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> he says grudgingly. We could times by another 5 if we wanted to get rid of all the, the fractions, or we could just deal with it as it, how it is. We've got. Um, 50, that, what is that? 30 minus 3 fifths of x plus 2 fifths of x is 27. Leaving us with 30 minus a fifth of x is 27. So a fifth of x is equal to 3 if we rearrange it. So x equals 15. And I ought to put that back into context, that is 15 red with beads, discs, in the bag. And there we go, that would be the way to solve that. The, the method is fair enough, we argued a little bit about how to deal with the fraction over 50, but I, I think we're happy with everything else. There we go. Right. Maths and maths stuff, called maths.